Hi, everyone. It's Matt from The Pen Habit. Welcome back to another video. And as many of the previous videos have been, this is another video for one of the pens I'm going to be raffling away at the end of season two, at the end of June 2015. And uh, if if you are familiar with my reviews and have watched them before, you know that the big swoopy V on this box means that I will probably be very sad to see this pen go. Uh, it's no secret that I really like Visconti pens. I have several of them. I like them all. I've yet to, go, to get a Visconti pen I didn't really like. Um, it's just, a, it's, for me, Visconti is kind of the, the brand that speaks to me. Um, so here's the box that comes in. This is, it says Visconti Firenze and the writing Renaissance. Nice Visconti V on it. Uh, pull this out of the box. And we have this nice leather, faux leather um, pen case. So open it up. And on the inside, we have this little beauty here. So here's the what comes on the inside of the pen case. This is the Visconti Opera Club in the cherry juice finish. So this is a part of their Circling the Square series of pens. So you can see that if you look at the profile here, it's an it's kind of an eight-sided pen, but it's mainly a square where they've rounded off the corners a little bit. And so that's where that term circling the square comes from. Uh, it's a lovely pen made out of a lovely material. It, it is. Uh, as are many Visconti pens, a little on the flashy side. Some people don't like that. Um, I do, uh, and uh, like it a lot. This is one of those pens that I really enjoy quite a bit. So let's walk through the uh, the design. So up at the top, you've got a little uh, medallion here that says Visconti. Then you've got the cap, which follows that same circling the square design. You've got the Visconti bridge clip. Uh, the bridge clip is one of those things you either love or hate, um, or like me, you just don't care about. Uh, I don't clip my pens. A lot of people really dislike the look of this bridge clip, but it is kind of the brand identity, so you're not really going to get away from it that much. Um, this one is much tighter than most of the bridge clips that I've used. This one would actually probably do a pretty good job of holding up the pen in place. Uh, it says Opera there and uh, then tapers down to an, another metal finial here at the end. I like this material quite a bit. It, I've, had a, I've actually had several people ask if it's stone. It's not, it's acrylic, but it, you can see like some of the, the chatoyants in, in the white portions here. It looks almost like stone, and it feels kind of like stone. Uh, I earlier, I think the very first review I did, or one of the very first videos I did, was for a set of um, handmade pens that I bought locally at Pike Place Market in Seattle. And uh, one of the pens was made out of a material called True Stone, which is uh, kind of a cast, they call it cast alabaster. Um, that's what this kind of feels like. It's There's no doubt it's plastic, but it kind of feels like stone. It's very well polished, very pretty looking. Uh, screw the pen, or unscrew the cap. Uh, I've got the threads in the acrylic here and a metal section. I don't love the metal section, um, but I don't often hold it like down here. I usually hold my pen up here on the threads. The threads are not sharp. Um, they're, they're quite smooth, uh, so you don't need to worry if you do, if you are one of those people who holds the threads a little higher up. It is a cartridge converter pen. Because the section is metal, you would not want to use it as a an eyedropper, which is fine. You know, nothing wrong with that. We've got here the Visconti branded converter. So, you know, I feel like Visconti's converters in general, they just feel a little more solid than the standard Schmidt style converters you get. They're, you know, it's just a it's a little bit of design that you don't see on the part of the pen you, you know. It's, it's on a part of the pen you don't see, but still they, they put a little effort into it. Um, got the, the Visconti logo kind of uh, etched or embossed or cast, and I don't know exactly how they did that, but got the Visconti logo, and then it says Visconti on the section there. Uh, okay, so that takes us to the nib. So 
This nib is one of Visconti's, what is known as Dream Touch nibs. It's a 23 karat palladium nib. I've reviewed a couple of these in the past. One from a, I got on a uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Another on my very much beloved Viscontia Divina Elegance in blue. So this is another one. It is all silver or all, all silver colored to match the section and the rest of the hardware on the pen. And it's a nice writer. I got this one in medium. So let's talk through the statistics, shall we? Capped, you are looking at 138. It's, it's a decent sized pen. It's not huge though. Uh, this pen does not feel massive the way that the Davina does or the, the Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Maxi does. This feels like kind of a more average midi sized pen. Uh, uncapped, you're looking at 128. Uh, and uh, this is how I write with the pen. I use, I use it uh, uncapped or unposted. Uh, but it can be posted and it posts pretty securely notice. Uh, I find it to be too back heavy. Um, it doesn't fall over, but it's still, it's, it just feels a little awkward. And it's pretty, it's, it's not too long. It's 163 millimeters uh, when it's posted. But, but I, don't, I don't like writing with this pen posted. It just doesn't feel right in the hand. Section is 10 and a half millimeters. You've got at the widest point, 13.6 millimeters on the barrel. And the cap is 15.1 millimeters at its widest. And then it is a, what I consider a middleweight pen. It is a 24 grams uncapped or unposted and an extra 14 grams for the cap for a total of 38 if you want to post it. So it will be a little bit heavier if you, if you like the extra weight, you can post the pen. So that is the pen. I, you know, the material is really interesting. And if you look at it really closely, I don't know if I can get the camera to focus here, but, um, Nope. I'll bring it back down then. But you can see there's little line, even uh, there's a lot of detail in this material you don't see until you look at it close up. Now, people either really like this material or they really don't. That's been my experience. I have people who are like, ah, this just, I don't like this at all. And other people who are like, this is my favorite pen in your collection. Um, for me, it falls right in the middle. I like this material a lot, but you know, this, this doesn't compete with me for, for like the celluloid, the Omas arc, brown arco celluloid or that sort of thing. So it's a nice material. It's really unique. I like the shape of the pen a lot and it's a really good writer. So speaking of writing, let's dive in and do that, shall we? This is the Visconti Opera Club in the cherry juice finish. Oh, one thing I should mention really quickly before I go on with writing sample, I'm going to flick the pen here. So I don't know if you can hear that, but one of the things I don't like about this pen is that the converter, which is very secure in here. In fact, I believe it's a, a screw in. Yeah, it's a screw in converter, so it's not coming out, but it's so long and and the interior of the barrel so narrow that the pen, the, the converter actually will hit the inside of the barrel and rattle a little bit when you write. Kind of bugs me, um, but not enough to, to dislike the pen. Anyway, uh, the nib is a 23 karat palladium dream touch nib. I actually think that's one word. Uh, and the ink for today is Diamine Merlot. Okay. Here's the writing sample quote thing. Okay. Now, um, what you probably heard in the video 
was it's not quite as squeaking but it's there's there's some the, the nib makes a little bit of noise now i've done a little bit of polishing on it because it was kind of unple- it came to me kind of unpleasant which was a real surprise to me because normally this conti nibs are just smooth and and i i don't i have very little problem with them but this one it wrote well but it had a kind of an unpleasant finish to the nib uh, like it hadn't been properly polished. I didn't go very far with it because I, I didn't want to, to completely ruin the original feel of the nib because I wanted to review it as it came originally, but I couldn't force myself to write with it exactly the way it was for you know several months until I got around to doing the review. So I have done a little bit of smoothing, not as much as I would do were this pen going to continue being mine. And uh, if whoever wins the raffle for this pen wants me to, I will smooth it out even more. I've got no problem doing that. Um, but it, it does have a little bit of feedback that I find to be uh, just slightly unpleasant. Um, it's not it's not that really nice feedback that lets you know you're writing. It's that fingernails on a chalkboard feedback. I find it to be just a, just a little tiny bit. I'm being very nitpicky here. Um, like most Dream Touch nibs, uh, as, as I have experienced them, this pen does put down a fair bit of ink. It's a pretty wet nib. And you can tell here, I mean, this is pretty wide for a medium. Uh, almost to a broad. This is a, a pretty you know, wide medium. It also, you can get a lot of line variation out of these palladium nibs. Uh, they, they, you know, they're not meant to be flexed necessarily, but you go slow enough and you don't push them too hard. You can get some, some nice line variation out of, out of the nib. Um, you know, one thing is funny. Let me see if I can find it in the box. Ah, sometimes they include it, sometimes they don't. Um, ah, here it is. Don't press. This nib will follow your dreams. Uh, so <laughs> they, I think they, they, they know that these palladium nibs are, are pretty soft. Uh, so if you know what you're doing, you can push a little bit of coaxing out of them. But if you don't, I wouldn't recommend it. But man, this pen just... No, when, no pressure at all on this pen. I mean, it it writes really nicely. It's just that little bit of feedback I don't care for uh, that is is getting in the way of me just absolutely loving the pen. But that's an easily fixable problem. Uh, reverse writing here, quite smooth. One of the best reverse writers I have ever seen. Um, little dry, does not like the cross strokes very much, at least not going to the right. But it works works pretty well as a reverse writer there. Uh, you know, standard plastic feet on the pen there. Uh, it really is a lovely, lovely pen. This is one I'm going to miss when I do the giveaway at the end of the season. It's, uh, this, is, this is one pen I bought with Pen Habit Funds, and I thought, oh man, if I, if I, if I really like this pen, I don't want to have to give it away at the end of the season. There were two pens that, uh, that were when I when I realized I was going to have to give them away, were really difficult ones for me. This is one of them. Uh, I've got the review for the other one coming up very shortly. And it came down to, do I buy this? Because I wanted to buy one of the two of them to keep for myself. And I was like, do I buy another one of this or do I buy another one of the other pen? And I ended up buying another one of the other pen, but I haven't ruled out getting myself another one of these. The one I really want, though, this is kind of one of my my dream pens. I want to get an Opera Elements uh, water, which is the white and blue swirled one. And I want to get a Visconti Wall Street with that green stripy celluloid, uh, which are the same basic design of pen. Um, but I like the materials on those just a little bit better. So I think I'm going to save my, uh, my Visconti desires for those pens. Anyway, I really, really like this pen. It's a lovely pen. It's a great writer. It could use just a touch more smoothing, but the nib's got a lot of give to it. Uh, neat material. Yeah, whoever wins this, you're going to be getting one heck of a great pen. So thank you, as always, for watching The Pen Habit. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or head over to penhabit.com and leave them on the comments section for the written review of this opera club 
cherry juice. Uh, you can find me on all the social media hangouts. And uh, don't forget, if you like what I do and want to support the pen habit, uh, click on the pen habit link or the support the pen habit link down below to find out how. And uh, one thing to note is I am going to be going to the Washington DC pen show in August of 2015. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to do several videos while I am there. So any support that you give me will go toward helping get me there and uh, do some videos while I am there. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.